interview with Chris and all his hits. Living next door to Alice. I'll meet you at midnight and Midnight Lady. So join me and Chris Norman on Wednesday the 10th of February at 4.15pm only on Rusty Mike Radio. Till then, bye bye for now. Hello to Chris Norman. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you. First of all, let us know who were your music and influences? Um, well, I started listening to music in a big way when I was a little kid, listening to people like Elvis Presley and Little Richard and Roddy Donegan and stuff. But the thing that really sort of kick-started my wanting to be a musician myself was the Beatles thing, you know, in the 60s when the Beatles came out. And they were my biggest influence of everybody. Smoky Meat. Um, three of us went to school together, myself and Alan Silson and Terry Utley, um, all went to the same school in Bradford, Yorkshire, where we came from. And uh, me and Alan Silson started to um, realise each other had the same interests and stuff, so we went around to each other's houses and started playing guitar together, and, and then Terry came into that. And then later on, Pete came in, who'd been a local musician who we'd known, um, and he joined the band in 73. So. And then that was the completion of it then, you know. And where did the name Smokey come from? Well, we were called all kinds of names. We were called, um, we started off with all funny, funny names like the Elizabethans and then Kindness. And when we signed the record contract with Rap Records, um, they wanted us to have a more catchy name because they didn't think Kindness was very catchy, which they were right. And uh, it was Mike Chapman who thought of the name, I think because of my voice being a bit croaky. I think the idea was... Um, you know, he's got like a smoky voice, so that was the idea, that the, the name Smokey, and it was a, the, probably the best name we'd had so far, because everybody remembered it. Smokey song? Um, probably the very first hit we ever had, which is called If You Think You Know How To Love Me, because it was, um, it always, whenever I hear that now, ever, on the radio or anything, it always reminds me of that time, which was really exciting, because the first time you ever played on the radio, and I remember being like on a, a Sunday afternoon at now in the car, and Pick of the Pops was on the BBC, and um, on came this record, and they said, this is Smoky number 16, and then it went up to number 33, and it was just so exciting. So whenever I hear that record, I get that feeling back, and so that's still my favourite. So it's Living Next Door to Alice. Tell me about that song. Well, it's a funny story, because we, we actually were recording in America. We were recording in Los Angeles. It was our third album, I think, we were doing. And um, Mike Chapman, our producer, had this song called Living Next Door to Alice, and he played it to us, and we said, no, we don't want to do that, it's too country, you know? And he said, yeah, but it'd be great for America, you know, because if we can break through into America through the country charts, it could be a big hit. Um, it could be a lot of good, you know, but we won't put it out anywhere else because it's only for an American thing, and then it won't spoil the image for, for the rest of the world. So we said, okay, and we recorded it on that basis that it was just going to be out in America. And then, of course, we finished the album, we got back to, to England, and the first thing that Mickey Most, who was out who on the label, said this, this, the first single should be Living Next Door Alice. And we said, no, 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 you know, it's not supposed to be out in England at all. And, and then, of course, all the countries like, throughout Europe, Germany and Holland and everywhere, all picked up on that, and they all came in with, this is the first single, you know, so we were kind of outvoted. And we weren't very happy about it at the time, I must say, but we kind of went with it. Um, and, and, of course, they were right as far as how big a hit it was because it became a huge selling record and was number one all over the world. But we still weren't that keen on it. And even now, I like do it now, and it's just part of my history now, um, it, it sort of changed the way that the group was perceived, I think, after that. What do you think of the cover version of Living Next Door to Alice from Gompi in 1995? Yeah, I remember hearing that for the first time. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a laugh, you know, and uh, I, I don't mind it at all. It's a bit of, bit of a laugh and grumpy. The only problem was that the new Smokey, because I left Smokey in the 80s after we finished with the, 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 the hits we had and everything in 86, I went solo, um, and the new Smokey carried on um, for a bit without me and without Pete and now later on without Alan. So, but they recorded it, a version of, uh, of, of that gumpy thing too. Um, and I thought they shouldn't have because, you know, Smokey originally done it anyway. So, to re-record it seems to me like they jumped on the bandwagon and it didn't really need that. So, I didn't like that version, but it's just the song itself, okay. Why did you leave? Well, I was, um, we, we actually, we, of already in 82 after we were doing different things and I was doing some producing and some solo stuff 
and then we got back together in eighty five for a couple of years to do some touring um, and it was during that time that i had this big hit record in germany with, with midnight lady a song called midnight lady and then that was a solo thing for me it started my solo career bigger because it spread into other countries in europe and became a hit and then i had the, the decision to make whether i could do both things or which one i was going to choose if not and uh, I decided if I did both things, I would never be at home because there would be so much promotion and touring to do with, with Smokey and then the same thing with me that I would never get home. So I, choose, I chose to go solo because it's been what I've been trying to do for a few years anyway. Um, so I left then in 86 and uh, that's it. And that's how I left. And then later on, Pete had already left. That's the drummer. He'd already left. And then a couple of years later, a few years later, I was still some guitar player left. Stumbling in is a duet between yourself and Susie Quattro. How did that come about? Um, we were at a party actually. Um, there was a, an award ceremony in in, uh, in Europe for for best group and best this and the other. We uh, Smokey got a, a gold uh, Otto, I think it was called this award, and. Um, Afterwards, there was a party, and all the people who were on the ceremony were there. We were having a few drinks, and uh, in the corner was a group playing, just a, a local group with some equipment, and everybody was getting up and jamming, you know. And I got up with Susie, and we started to sing some old rock and roll song like Long Tall Sally or something. And um, Mike Chapman was in the audience, who was her producer and also our producer. And when we got, sat down again, he said to us, you know, you look so great up there, why don't we do a record together? So she was in the studio anyway doing an album, so I went in and joined in their session and we recorded uh, Stumbling In and one other song, which was the B-side called Stranger With You. And then I went back to Smokey, she went off and did her own thing, and the next thing it came out and was it. So it's just one of those lucky things. Our love is alive. Tell me about it, your biggest solo, solo hit, which is uh, Midnight Lady here in Israel. How did that come around and what's, who wrote the song? Uh, it was written by Dieter Boland, and uh, he was a, a big fan of Smokey at the time, and he was trying to get some involvement with us, we, and I got a call. We must say that Dieter Boland was in uh, Modern Talking, no? That's right. Yeah, because yeah, Modern right. Talking were extremely big in the 80s here in Israel. Yeah. Well, that was Modern Talking was a kind of a completely different area. It was like disco and all that stuff. So when I first heard about Dieter Boland wanting to do this record with me, and produced this song he'd written. I said to everybody, I don't think so, you know, it's not my kind of stuff. But then they sent me the tape and uh, I listened to it and thought, why not? So I went over and recorded it and it was a really quick thing. I went into the studio, I didn't even play on it or anything, which is not usually, it's not usual for me. And I just went in and sang this song and then went back to the office, to the record company office, had a couple of drinks and went back home. And then it came out, it was a big hit, so it was a, it was a good start. Do you still get the same buzz when you go out on the stage as you did in the 70s? Um, I think more, really, to be honest, because um, in the 70s, I was, you know, it was always a lot of pressure and I was trying to find myself kind of and what to do. And I think now I'm more comfortable with being on stage because I've been doing it for so long. Um, and so I can relax more. So I enjoy it more. I love to go on stage and there's, there's a big audience and the reaction that you get from an audience. It's a great feeling to stand up there and, and sing songs for people who want to hear them, you know. So I think more now, yeah. What can we expect from your shows here in Israel? What songs are you going to perform for us? Uh, I'm, I'm going to do, I usually do about two hours. My, my normal concert set's about two hours. And it's a mixture of all kinds of stuff. I do a lot of smoky songs because I know people want to hear that. Um, so I'll do a little next door Wallace and I'll meet you at midnight and don't play rock and roll to me. And if you think I'll, I'll do about eight or so, maybe more smoky songs. Um, I do some solo stuff and I also do some stuff like uh, there's a, I, it's very rocky at part. The, the show's very rocky. I've got a, a, a six piece band, so it's quite a rock band. And a lot of it's quite rocky, but then I do an acoustic bit in the middle where we all sit down and just play acoustics and sing uh, some of the softer songs, you know, like the next door Wallace and everything that I mean. I do also the boxer by Simon and Garfunkel, and, uh, and then I also do some other songs by other people like Sledgehammer, My, um, My Sharona and stuff, which is the rocky bit as we're going towards the end. So it's, it's, um, it's a rock show, but with a lot of songs that people would know. Let's uh, say goodbye to... Uh... Chris Norman, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, Chris. Yeah, it's a pleasure.